Apostle Johnson Suleiman made a video that he mailed and he used some certain words that are very annoying that are not supposed to be used. He said so many things on that video, which he is not supposed to say. In fact, he has no right to stand on judgment on those topics that he was discussing. On the way he drives the topic, in as much as he was trying to go to a direction that was supposed he, he, his message was supposed to be, the way I saw it, his message was supposed to be about unity, protecting your own brother and your sister. That was supposed to be his message. That was be, to be his message, being your brother's keeper. That was what I saw. That was supposed to be the title of that message, being your brother's keeper. But he narrowed it down and begin to talk about the Igbo Biafrans instead of generalizing the topic. If he has made it an open topic to generalize, to make it an open topic to discuss about people considering themselves, people loving themselves, people protecting themselves, it would have been better. But when he came and began to narrow it down to the Igbos, that is where he got it wrong. That is why he got it all wrong. But when you check from the beginning of the message, the message he was about to preach was the message of unity. Unity at home. Love for yourself. Love for yourself before you talk about loving somebody because if you don't love yourself, you can't love another person. You must love yourself before you love someone else. That was where the message of Johnson Suleiman was going. But he went out of the message and ran into talking about the Igbos. And that was where he got it all wrong. And every example that he was using, every illustration he was doing, given there, we are totally wrong, absolutely wrong. And this is what every other indigenous tribe have been doing. Each time they see the Igbo Bia France as a tough, soft target, because whenever you speak about them, you get more audience. When you speak about the Igbo Bia France on a negative form, you get more support and you get a large audience. That is why so many indigenous tribes have fallen aside from the real thing. They seem not to see the good aspect of the evils, and most of the time they try to go to that negative side to begin to push a message that is wrong. I would like us to listen to that message of uh, Apostle Johnson Suleiman once again. When we listen to that message, then we can now begin to discuss the message for you to know actually where he was coming from before he got it wrong. From the onset, the Message was good, as I was told. He has an intention of preaching a message of unity, loving yourself, loving yourself. You have to love yourself before you love one uh, someone else. Being good at home, you have to be good from home before. See you, Namara Mama Puama. That was the message he wanted to preach, but I don't know why he decided to narrow it down to the Igbos. He has no right to narrow such message down. He has no right to do such. He has no right to narrow the, the, it down to that sort. To such a, a level. If he has kept it the way he started the message, if he has kept it the way the message was supposed to be, nobody's going to get offended. It will be a lesson to everybody to learn. But he decided to use a form that was very, very annoying and very, very provocative. And many people got, didn't get the message. Even when they got the message, they refused to accept it because of the way he preached the message. That is why I asked on, my, on the topic, I said, why is it that Igbos are always seen as a soft target? Every other indigenous tribe, they always see Igbos as a soft target. The Igbo be France. Why? Why is it so? Now, let us listen to that message that Joseph Suleiman preached. And let us listen to it. After listening to that message, then we will talk about it. Let's watch. Somebody from the south, somebody from the east, you betray your people. Look at this agitation now for this. Is it Biafra? Biafra. Look at the agitation. Who are the people attacking Biafra most? Ibos. Shameless Ibos. Am I in support of Nigeria dividing? No. Am I in support of Nigeria separating? Sorry, he didn't start from where I wanted him to start. I want him to start from the where he was talking about. When he started the message of preaching, he talked about the South. He talked about the South. South, South, and the Southeast. He mentioned Southern and Southern before he somebody went from the south, out of somebody from the east. You betray your people. You heard him. He said, Somebody from the south, somebody from the east, you betray your people. That very point is very important. That is where I want everybody to listen and watch. When he was starting that message, he had a good intention of preaching 
unity. We loving ourselves first before we love someone else. It doesn't matter your tribe. It doesn't matter your region. He was trying to preach a message of self-preservation. Self-preservation. Preserve yourself first before you begin to talk about preserving somebody else. And he was talking about the South, South, and the South East. But for one reason or the other, he escaped from what he was trying to preach and begin to talk about the Ibo Biafran hello. And he went outside and began to use some language that he was supposed to use, even when he was calling names. Even though from onset, when you look from the beginning, you will see that he wasn't referring to the Holy Ibos, but the way he started and began to preach, he got it all wrong. It went on. Let us listen carefully again. Watch when he mentioned the South, South, and the South East. Somebody from the South, somebody from the East, you betray your people. Look at this agitation now for this. Is it Biafra? Biafra. Look at the agitation. Who are the people attacking Biafra most? Ibos. Shameless Ibos. Am I in support of Nigeria dividing? No. Am I in support of Nigeria separating? No. Do I believe we should be together? Yes. But even if you don't agree with the man who is your brother, should you say it publicly if you are not a fool? Can't you say it amongst your people? If today they get that Biafra, it's an Ibo man that will scatter it. That's the truth. You, wait, 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 wait. When it, during the time of the Senate, when an Igbo man became a senator, it was an Igbo man that removed him. You remember the NWRM, Chuba Okadigbo, Payosanyim, you remember all of them? It was Igbo that was removing Igbo. That was the first and the shortest Senate presidentship we have had in this country. An Igbo man employs an Igbo boy to sell in the shop. He will wreck him. He will carry all the man's money, be buying land, even where to be settled. The problem of Igbo is Igbo. I repeat it, if you sell your brother, even the buyers will not trust you. Even if my brother is saying something that is wrong, I'm going to correct him, but I'm not do that publicly. You see, when you watch the message he was preaching, just as I explained from the beginning, he started very good. He was trying to preach a message of self-preservation. Self-preservation. And it's not just about the evil. He said, South. Then he said southeast. I mean, he said south, south, and southeast. When he was talking about south, he was trying to generalize the message. But all of a sudden, he began to narrow it down to only the Igbos, which are always their soft target. For a reason best known to them, I don't know why the Igbos are always their soft target. And where again he got his run? In preaching the message of self preservation, he has no right to mention Biafra for the fact that he said that he wants Nigeria to remain together. He is in support of one Nigeria. He is not in support of Biafra. He has no right to use Biafra as an example. He has no right to use Biafra as an example, as long as he doesn't support Biafra, because he himself is from a Biafra land. He himself, where he's come from, is Biafra land. The South South he is claiming he's come from is Biafra land. So for the fact that he is not in support of Biafra, him using Biafra as an example, he has failed it. He has no right to mention Biafra. In that very thing he was saying. In that message, he has no right to mention Biafra whatsoever. He has no right to mention Biafra. For him to open his mouth and say he wants Nigeria to be together, he wants Nigeria to remain together, he is not in support of the separation. He has no right to talk about it. Biafra wants to have self-determination. That is what Biafra stands for. Self-determination. We want to be on our own. So Suleiman, who doesn't believe in, in, in Biafra, doesn't have any right to tell us who is fighting against Biafra and who is not fighting against Biafra. Suleiman himself is standing against Biafra. So why would he be the one to tell us who is fighting against Biafra and who is not fighting against Biafra? Why will he be the one to tell us who is fighting against Biafra? He himself is in Biafra land and he is fighting against Biafra. So the message is against himself. He is not supposed to use Biafra as his example at any point in time. That is why he got it wrong. In as much as he calls himself apostle or whatever, he got it all wrong. I wish he preached his self, his self preservation, preached his self determination, self preservation. I wish he preached it without mentioning the Igbos, without mentioning the Biafra issue. Preach it generally and advise people to preserve themselves. Take care of yourself before you talk about taking about care of another person. Love yourself before you think about loving someone else. Let it be a general message. It will be good. But he decided to narrow it down to the Igbos because that is where he's going to catch up with his crowd. That is where he's going to get more support. Why is it that we are Igbos, 
the Igbo Biafans are always a soft target for them. Why? And he went on to begin to give example of, uh, of politicians. He gave the example of, uh, of, uh, of senators, senators who were removed. He said their brothers keep removing them. Nobody removed any senior president. There is no Igbo person that has the power to remove any Igbo, Igbo senior president. The only person who was manipulating the removal of the senior president was the president at that time, which is Obasanjo. Only the president, only the president can manipulate such a thing. If you cannot know, if you are not around then, you didn't know what happened. Look at what happened during the time of Saraki. Look at what happened during the time of Saraki. When Saraki was the senior president, the whole manipulation that was coming was coming from the presidency. And without the canoe advance and the approval of the presidency, you cannot remove him. And when you talk about Igbos, removing Igbo and put Igbo, the slot was already meant for the Igbos. The Southeast owned the slot. So when the person there did not dance to the tune of the president, the president would remove the person and put someone else from the Southeast who he feel would dance to his tune. And when that same person did not dance to the tune of the president, the president would remove him and put someone else. So I don't know why someone like Suleiman does not have such knowledge to know that it is not Igbo that we're removing the senior president. There was no Igbo that was involved in removing senior president of Igbo and put another Igbo senior president, removing Igbo senior president and put another one. The only man that was manipulating that thing was Obasanjo. At that time, the president at that time was the one who was manipulating it. And the example, if you don't know, maybe you were not there then, the example is the one that happened during the return of Muhammad Buhari. Muhammad Buhari did everything possible to remove Saraki because Saraki was not approving those things he was pushing to him. He was not approving them. Saraki was not approving them until they tried and tried and manipulated until they decided to push him away when they got the majority. And during this time, this Suleiman was given this very thing. Obasanjo have all the Senate on his side. PDP have the majority. They can they can vote out anybody they want to vote out. They can sack anybody they want to sack as a senior president. They can do it easily. But during the time of Saraki, it wasn't easy. Because, because the, 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 uh, the PDP then and APC, they had a, a kind of a squabbles. They were not agreeing. And they could not have that consensus to remove Saraki. That was why Saraki stayed long. So when he was given an example of that very... That very Senate is, you know, he would remove this one. That was a manipulation, a lie in the altar. And Suleiman should know better. You don't lie in the altar. He, assuming you are not sure. If you are not sure about it, don't talk about it. And I can't say you are not sure because this is not the first time Suleiman is using that example. Suleiman have used that example before. I don't know the reason why people cannot point it out to him and lecture him and tell him that that example he is using is wrong. It's wrong. There is no Igbo person that is removing any senior president. It is not the Igbo's remove the senior president. And why they remove the person and an Igbo person comes in again is because the slot is for the people from the South South. As long as the person there is not playing to the tune of the presidency, the presidency will manipulate the, 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 the House. We manipulate the lawmakers to make sure that they remove the person who is in power, who is there. So how does it become the Igbo's removing Igbo and putting Igbo? Those are the lies that he was pushing forward. Those are lies. And then he went ahead to give example of Igbo traders who are trading their brothers that they will not even be patient to finish their business and then they will begin to build houses and build it. This is, this, these things are manipulation. And you forgot that the Igbos, why they survive today is because Igbos have settled themselves. 80% of Igbos that are successful in business today were settled by the masters. Go and check, even up to today, there are still so many Igbos who are serving their masters who have been settled. The people who you are taking that are manipulating their, their masters or taking what you are there from the brand, they are just minute, not up to 1%. They are not up to 1%. And why are you now trying to blow that out of proportion? You blow it out of proportion, then you now use it to overshadow every good thing that the Igbos are doing. These Igbos are talking about, it is about themselves and them. You are not an Igbo. It is about themselves. They protect themselves, they help themselves, and they survive among themselves. And look at him using that example. He used every example he used. That is to show you that he just wanted to use the Igbos as a soft target and fully attacked. He started well. Initially, he mentioned South South and South East. And he was talking about self preservation. So, why don't you remain on that base of self preservation? People to love themselves. Love yourself before you love someone else. Why don't you remain there before you begin to graduate, before you take it out of proportion? 
He didn't even there. He now just focus on the target, which is Ibos, a place you know that everybody will support you. He began to preach about the Ibo Biafra. You are not a Biafra. For the fact that you don't support Biafra, even though you are a Biafra and you don't support Biafra, that makes you not qualified to use Biafra as example on such situation. Because you yourself is a saboteur. You are sabotaging your people. You are also sabotaging your people. And then you went ahead to use an example of Senate president. Senate president that everybody knows that it is not the Igbos that manipulate who goes there and who does not. The person who can have the power to manipulate such a thing is the presidency. Obasanjo, as at that time, was doing the manipulation. And while you were seeing Igbos coming out and coming out, it was their slot. When Obasanjo brings the person and the person is not in agreement with him, doesn't agree with whatever he said, he will manipulate and remove him and put someone else. But it's only in the mouth of Suleiman that I have always had it. This is not the first time. I'm going to plan that video where you will see where he was using the same illustration, the same wrong illustration. You talk about the Igbos don't love themselves. Can you tell me any tribe in, in, in that country called Nigeria that love themselves more than the Igbos? Love is not just in your mouth. It's, you want to express love. It's not just by saying it. It's not just by saying it in your mouth. It's not just by pretending. People who are acting love, act, they act it. They put love, love in action. Can you tell me if in any tribe in Nigeria that put love in action apart from the Igbos? It is the Igbos that introduce what you call the town union. When you talk about town union, it is the Igbos that introduces a town union where the whole Igbos gather together and know about yourself. They gather together, talk about themselves. They are the only people, the major people who know that when something happens, they can gather together. When their brother die abroad, they will bring the cops back home and make sure that the person returns home. They are the people who, it was even because of their love and support for each other, that was why they were able to survive the civil war. Three good years, civil war. Three good years, civil war. The reason why they survived it was because of the love. There is no other tribe, no other tribe that can survive what the evil survived during the civil war. It was only love that made it to survive. Even when everything they had that was taken away from them, only 20 pounds was given to every Igbo person. No matter their half, you have an account. Every Igbo person that has money in the bank, no matter the half amount you have, they give you 20 pounds. Do you know how they managed to succeed? They managed to survive out of support for each other. They carried each other in their shoulders. Out of love for one another. They built themselves up. They did everything together. There is no other tribe in Nigeria that can survive what the Igbo survived and have the love the Igbo have. It is because of the love of Igbo. That is why today, today, poverty rate in Igbo land is lowest. Poverty rate in Igbo land today is the lowest. It's the lowest because they carried each other along. Go and check. When you're hearing about Alaba International, all the international markets you're hearing about, go and check. You will see that 80% of the people who are sitting there, we are settled with their master who they served in that market. Some of them we are brought from the village. It is among the Igbos you see people who will go and see a road outside, see a business outside, they will come and bring their brother and teach him that business. Not only teaching him, and they will settle him and give him money to start. It is the Igbo people that have brought the idea of you don't have enough money to do a business. This one will bring money. This one will bring some money. So they put the money together and now they will do that business and forge ahead and form a very big company. What are you telling me? What are you not telling me? But every time you see them begin to use some minor, minor issues to begin to preach, preach, preach something and say, Igbos are this, Igbos are this, Igbos are that, Igbos are that, Igbos are this. You talk about the way even the Biafra, you, he doesn't even have any right to mention Biafra, Biafra struggle because when you talk about the Biafra struggle, there is no struggle on the planet Earth where you do not have misunderstanding that it has never happened. Any struggle you see on the planet Earth, any place you see people fighting for their for, for, fighting for their freedom, there is always that division, there is always argument and division, there is always misunderstanding. There is no place on the planet Earth where you do not have such misunderstanding. But that doesn't mean that the people don't know what they're looking for. They are still pursuing their freedom. And if you tell him, and for him coming to tell me that when you get the Biafra today, it is the people that will destroy it. He has no right to say such. He has no right to say such. He, because he himself, he himself supposedly is supposed to be a Biafra. He has yet to Someone like him will be the ones that will make sure that the Biafra didn't come. And even if Biafra come, that it will not stand. Somebody like Suleiman will be praying that Biafra never comes. Because he said it openly. 
that he doesn't support the breaking of Nigeria. He doesn't support, he wants everybody to be together. For him to mention that and say it and defend it, he is even praying for Biafra to come. Even though when you check very well, he is part of the Biafra. And he is yeah, preaching again himself. He decided to narrow it down, narrow it down to the Igbo Biafrans. Because that is where they always have their soft landing. That is where they always have people who support them. That is where they always have a view that they feel that people will buy. Why do they always make the Igbo Biafrans a soft target? Why? This is the evil the Fulani Caliphate have planted. The evil that the Fulani Caliphate have planted, it is still ringing bell in their head. Upon all the messages that our school and Mazen Nan have preached, Mazen Nan can preach and preach and preach and preach. And so many people in the coastal region have woken up. So many of our Biafran brothers have woken up. But some people are still bent on revising and bringing back all those evil talks. Every time you hear Igbos don't love themselves, Igbos don't. Check, tell me which people have made their own people more successful than the Igbos. Which people? Which people have made their people much more successful than the Igbos? When you talk about donations, go and check any platform where you see people raising funds or NGOs. Go and see the highest donor in NGOs. The other people, if people who don't have Igbos, they give. They give. It is only within the Igbos you see Igbos, they raise funds to do all manner of things for their own people. They raise funds at every given point in time. Once you mention it, you mention raising of fund. They will always support. Even if it's not an Igbo person, you will see them supporting. You will see them supporting. And they were the one that introduced it. The issue of raising funds to build houses, the issue of raising funds to support villages, and it was them that started it. It was the Igbos. Take, for example, during the time of uh, COVID-19. During the time of COVID-19, did you see any help coming from anybody to the Igbo people? Did you see anybody giving Igbos anything? In the north, the federal government were feeding them. In the southwest, even the Igbos were giving them. In the Igbo land, who was giving them? It is the Igbos themselves that were feeding their brothers and sisters. During the COVID-19, during people went during the lockdown, it was the Igbos that were feeding themselves. And still somebody will come and tell you that Igbos don't love themselves. This issue of traveling, when Nigeria began to travel, it was the Igbos that traveled out. They were the first people that started traveling, begin to travel. They were people that traveled in majority. Why are they the majority of abroad? It is the Igbos that travel. When they travel, they saw that the place they will come. They will use their money and sponsor their brother to come abroad without paying it a penny. They will use their money, sponsor their own brother. They take their brother. They will take their brother. They will take their sister along. They take their family. They take even their in-laws. That is why you see many of them out there. If they don't take you, they will give you connection and tell you how to do, go about it, and you come over there. But in other tribes, there are so many tribes in Nigeria where you see when they take you to go abroad, they will turn to you as a slave. He didn't see that. There are some tribes, when they take you to go abroad, they will carry you from Nigeria, take you to any part of the world, and they will make you a slave in that place. You will pay from your, you will, pay, you, you will serve them. After serving them, you will not even have your body to even live for your own money. That one doesn't matter. That one is love. You damn it as love. Who are, which tribe have made their people much more successful than the Igbos? Tell me. In that contract with God and which tribe have affected the life of their people more than the Igbos? Which tribe? In that contract with God and you will talk about the northern part of Nigeria. Northern part of Nigeria, they have the richest man in Africa. They have the richest man in Africa. How come they are the poorest? How come they are the poorest? How come? How come they are the poorest in that contract with God and but they have the riches. But every time you see them begin to push all this false information, push all this false information, they push it out and push it out, and people, some people begin to buy into it. When they push all those negative things about the Igbos, people begin to, that is the soft landing space for them. It's already a soft landing ground for them because each time they speak about it, you see people begin to follow them. And why it is moving forward? Because the Igbos are so accommodating that even when you are insulting them, they accommodate. So many of our Igbo people, when you insult them, they accommodate it. They will even stay there and begin to watch you insult them. They accommodate a lot. Igbos are much so accommodating to a fault. That is why they are being used as a soft target. 
Can you go and insult all the houses and insult them to their eyes? You dare, you dare not do it. Will you go and insult an Oduduwa man in his presence? You dare not do it because it's going to bounce back. But Igbos are those who can control it. And that is why most of the time when I speak on my channel, I tell you when you, you see Igbo person begin to demonize the Igbos, begin to talk about Igbos, I betray Igbos. I don't want to hear it in my ears. I don't want to hear it. I tell my fellow Biafran Igbos, Igbo Biafran, stop using such language. Stop using such language. Betrayers are everywhere. There are betrayers in all tribes, in all languages, in all religion. You know, everywhere you have betrayers. You have good people everywhere and you have bad people everywhere. And the large percentage of people in Igbo land are good people, wonderful people. Large percentage of them. The people you are talking about are just very minority, very minor people. But because Igbos are people who are very loud and they they don't they are loud and they are they are loud and they they they, they tolerate and condone to a fault. To a fault, just like Suleiman was saying. When he was talking about people saying they talk the truth. Ibos, you see them when, when something has to do with their brother, they will say they will not hide him. I'm, I'm, I'm staff for the truth. He said, Yes, yes, our people, our people, self, our people are doing it. What do you mean by your people are doing it? What do you mean by your people are doing it? Is there any tribe in this planet Earth that I don't have the evil men? Is there any planet Earth that have evil men? Look at him giving the example of Ibos removing Ibos in Senate. He forgot that when we have the president in Nigeria, when Shagari was ruling Nigeria, who removed Shagari? Who removed Shagari? Was it an Igbo person that removed Shagari? It was this same Muhammad Buhari that removed Shagari, overthrew Shagari. And who removed Muhammad Buhari? It was Babangida, a fellow Northern also, that overthrew them, overthrew his own brother. Buhari overthrew Shagari, his brother, and uh, Babangida overthrew Buhari himself. You would, you wouldn't see that to give us an example. Even in the Southwest, who were the people that manipulated, that made, uh, 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 what, what do they call him? That, that made Awole not to be able to, 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 to have his stand in, 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 in politics. The people who fought against Awole when Awole was there was the people from the Southwest. They stood against him. Abiola that died, who were the people who were making sure, working on the ground to make sure that Abiola doesn't become the president of Nigeria? It was people from the Southwest. They were the people. But nobody wants to use that as an example. Each time they want to use just such a full example, they will always narrow it down to the Igbo Biafrans. They will always narrow it down to the Igbo Biafrans. What has Igbo Biafrans done wrong to all this set of people? Why? Why is it that you're always talking about the Igbo Biafrans? Why is it that you cannot, why is it that you're always using the Igbo Biafrans as a soft landing? 